Hello and welcome to Mr Barton's Gapminder World video number 10. Now this week we're going to take a look at the employment rates for different countries across the world. And as ever, I'd like to paint you a little scenario and see if you can predict what the graph's going to look like. Okay, so along the x-axis we're going to have our usual measure of wealth, which is income per person. And on the y-axis I'm going to have the employment rate for anybody aged over the age of 15. Now the, what that means is that for a given year, what percentage of the population aged over 15 were in employment? So is that going to be a positive correlation? Is it going to be the case that the richer you are, the more a percentage of your population are in work? Is it going to be a negative correlation or is there going to be no correlation at all? Well, as ever, there is only one way to find out. So here is the graph. So there you go. In 2007, the world looks pretty scattered, I reckon, there. Um, you could argue it's a negative correlation, but it's a very, very weak one. And what I particularly like about this graph is just how you can actually pick out countries in each of the four corners. So, for example, if I go up there to Burundi, you'll see that 83% of its population are in employment, but it's very, very, very low income per person. But I can contrast that with another of the African nations, Mali, where it's got a relatively low employment rate, but still a very poor country. And conversely, I can go over here to Qatar, very high employment rate and very rich country, and I can pick out some of the Western European countries down here. Italy, again, very wealthy, but a pretty low employment rate. Um, what I also think is quite interesting is the African countries here. Now, they have a fair spread, but a lot of them are in the top left-hand portion of the graph, which is a very, very, very high employment rate and a very low income per person. So it's not the case that it's the poorer countries that have low employment rates. In fact, they, they, quite the opposite is true. They have very high employment rates. It's just perhaps that those jobs aren't bringing in the money that some of these Western European countries are. If I just highlight the Western European countries, you can see that they, they're fairly mixed bag all over the show, but again, tend to be towards the right of the graph, as you'd expect, for being quite wealthy. Um, let's see if things have changed over time. Now, data only goes back to the early 90s here, but we still get a good flavour. If I just move this along, you'll see that we have a usual movement. As ever, let's keep our eye on our friend China, the big red dot. Not a lot of movement going on there. It's moving to the right of the graph as it gets richer, but employment rate isn't changing a great deal. Um, I wonder what will happen if I change this uh, measure on the left hand side and instead of measuring all the people aged 15 and above that are in employment, if I just measure the people aged 15 to 24 in employment, how do you reckon that's going to change the graph? Let's have a look. I just click here and I go down to work and I'll need employment rate and I will go for age 15 to 24. Now I think this is quite interesting. Again, the graph is fairly scattered, still looking like a negative correlation. Just keep your eye on countries as I play this, okay? And especially China. A movement to the right, remember, is uh, the country getting richer. And a movement down is a fall in the employment rate for that particular age group. Now, China, as many other countries do, have a fairly significant fall in the employment rate for age 15 to 24. Now, again, I've no um, exact answer for this, but... One explanation, possibly, is that as a country gets richer, the more of its population can actually afford to stay in education, full-time education. So perhaps that's why countries such as China and some of the Western European countries such as France and Italy, perhaps that's why that they have quite a low employment rate for age 15 to 24 students. Whereas, of course, in the poorer countries, they have to be in work, so maybe that's where their employment rate is um, so high. Um, let's put those two variables together. So again, if I go here and I go to work and I go employment rate, and this time I would like the age 15 plus employment rate, and I think this is quite interesting. It's about as strong a positive correlation as you're going to get, suggesting there is a very strong relationship between um, the employment rates of 15 and above and 15 to 24. But again, some interesting outliers. Look at Qatar there. 76% of its population above 15 employed, but only 37% of its 15 to 24. And look at the massive spread of the Western European countries. Countries right down in the bottom left of the group and also countries right in the top right of the group. Anyway, that's all for this week. If you're on your summer holidays, I hope you have a lovely six weeks off. If you're not, I apologise and I will see you next week. Bye-bye.